Here we go. We are now live. I'm so excited to be here with Sarah Jo. Hello, Sarah Jo. Hi, Lila. Tales. I would just be doing this the whole time. <laughs> I know. You I know, know. And if you cut your hair, it looks like you could make a brush out of it. <laughs> yeah, so I, will. Cool. I will consider that. <laughs> so oh. cool. Um, so we've got a really, really fun day for everybody with our webinar. I hope you're enjoying all of them. If you missed any, you can go to the homes to the lilarogers.com main page and you'll see the links to previous webinars. Um, let me introduce, uh, oh, we already have a jillion attendees. I just love that. Um, let me introduce Sarah Jo to you. She has been with me, represented for a long time, which I love. Sarah Jo is a multidisciplinary artist, illustrator, and designer. Her award-winning work has appeared in graphic novels, illustrated books, film titles, publications, and on textiles and packaging. Her diverse client list includes Godiva Chocolates, Seattle Children's Hospital, Los Angeles Metropolitan Authority, Sterling Publishers, Penguin Random House, Paramount Pictures, all brand packaging. Yeah, she illustrated the box for Leo Burnett Advertising, Land of Nod, Chronicle Books, and many more. In 2020, she was commissioned to create reception pain, patient and procedure room wall murals for a new addition to Seattle Children's Hospital slated to open in 2021. And she just finished that project. Seattle and Sarah Jo, too many words with S's. How was it to work on that, Sarah Jo? How um, was that? Yeah, so um, I thank you for inviting me to be part of this. I'm really delighted. I hope I have some uh, helpful things to uh, add to this uh, webinar series. Um, uh, so um, I was working on the Seattle job happen right before everything shut down and I was actually supposed to go up to Seattle and I kind of was already hearing Seattle was one of the early places where, oh, where there was right. a lot of stuff going on and um, and so I was already a little concerned even before Los Angeles where I am um, shut down um, I was already like going on an airplane going up to Chicago uh, to Seattle sorry so, um, but really what was amazing about it is to uh, focus on a job like that during these past, whatever, it's been almost three months now, uh, two and a half, three months. Um, and, uh, and kind of working for, uh, I'm, I'm, the work I'm doing is going to be in the Children's Blood Donor Clinic. It's, it's like a new building they're putting up and I'm, um, my work is going to be on two floors. And then I think there's other artists excuse me, that are also involved in, in other parts of it. And um, it was just an incredible learning experience. And I think in a way, one of the biggest jobs I've ever done also just in terms of, but like all guys. Yeah, I mean, the idea, I worked in Adobe Illustrator for everything. I was very grateful to have been working in that program now for so many years. And um, because I, that was a job I literally could do. Everyone was asking me like, oh, you're flying up there, are you, are you painting these murals? Mm -hmm. I was like, no, everything was done here. Everything was video conferenced from here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was interesting because first people were meeting in the hospital and then everybody was kind of also probably quarantining. So people were you know, coming in um, and working remotely, so. Amazing, it's so great that you could do it virtually and everything. Um, how are you holding up during the pandemic? <laughs> Any tips for our audience how to get through maybe a tip or two to get through the day? You know, I think one of the things, um, uh, I was, you know, of course you talk to lots of your friends and ask them the same questions. So one comment has been like, a lot of things are really amplified right now. And um, so mm. I, so I think two things that I, I am appreciating the simplest things possible that mm. happen or that you make happen in your day. Uh, for me, it's going outside, being outside as much as I can and, and walking and hiking. I live near a really big uh, Griffith Park, a really big urban park, and I'm, I'm in it as much as I can. 
Um, I they forgot to mention Sarah Jo is in LA. I'm in Los Angeles. And, yeah, they shut one of the main roads, so there's no cars, so now all the people are walking on that. For a while, they'd shut the trails down. Now the trails are reopened. So I sort of feel like, let's just take over all the roads. Can we do that? Yeah. <laughs> um, also, oh, Sarah Jo, I have a question yeah. for you. Yeah. What cool things, I know this is a monstrosity. I know it's a terrible time, but there are some cool things, some good things happening, like there are more birds and so forth. What cool things are you seeing and that you hope will last, or just what cool things are you seeing? Well, I, I think it's, it, you're right, it's tempered by, it's been amazing to be in a place that, like a city like Los Angeles, it's huge, and to have it become so quiet, like, and that was for a while. Like now things are starting, you know, you're, you're starting to hear more cars and traffic. Um, and it, you understand like people are just suffering. Some of us are fortunate enough to be able to work um, from home. I mean, essentially that's what I've been doing for so many years already, but uh, you know, the, the usual things of this is just enormously affecting people. But for me, the simple things uh, have been incredibly clear days in Los Angeles. Like, with all the people driving um, and and then just enjoying and hearing the birds that's really been a big part of it for me as well um, and having this access to the park um, so I think building that in and the other thing I was going to mention that I sort of got myself to do is to not think too far ahead mm -hmm. uh, because I think we don't really know a lot yet and I have a tendency as we I think we most of us do you know, you want to you want to kind of know. You want to know, like, well, okay, what do I plan for at such and such a time? And as much as possible, um, where you don't have to do that. I, I think it's a sort of way of either I don't know if it's curbing your anxiety or just trying to keep a lid on it from from getting too recognizing that we just don't know. We don't have all the answers now, and um, and trying to keep that in mind, I guess. Mm. Yeah, that's so good. It's so true. It's it's kind of getting small, getting small, the little details. I want to remind everybody, put your questions for Sarah Jo or me in the Q&A, not the chat. To find the Q&A, go to the bottom of your thing and press the little Q&A bubble and it'll pop up. Um, we love to try to get to a bunch of questions as, if possible. I also want to remind you on the 28th of this month, next Thursday, we'll be interviewing Kendra Binney in our webinar. We're really enjoying them. And thank you for your kind words, um, how you're enjoying this. We will be seeing a bunch of Sarah Jo's work and a few actual products she's worked on. So you're going to have a really, really wonderful little art show shortly. But I have, um, I would love to know from you what you feel makes a great art director. What okay. makes an art director, you're like, I'm going to do my best work for this person. This person's bringing out my best. What um, would that be? So I kind of feel in this, in this type of work that you're always trying to do your best work. You, you know sometimes that a particular job may be really fast turnaround. Mm -hmm. uh, different jobs have different scales. You know, some are, uh, it's a small spot illustration. But it is partly that idea of like every job is like your, not your ticket, but you know, is your entry to the next job. It's something that you show. So, mm -hmm. so you're, you're always building up this repertoire, you know, and that very much includes, as Miss Lilla herself has always said, your personal work, whatever that is, like that mm -hmm. is really also a huge part of that. But in terms of art directors, I was thinking about this, this question. Um, and I think a good art director I mean, a lot of times people say, oh, someone who gave me, you know, the ability to do whatever I want. And I think of commission work a little differently because rarely has that actually been <laughs> the, the ability. Um, so really it's a collaborative process and it may be one art director, but the, uh, in the case of say Seattle, it's like I'm working with this team of people from Seattle too. And they are you know, people involved with the interiors, they are people who are on staff, who are advocating for future patients and families. Mm -hmm. So you're, sometimes you're working with this group, and I think of it a lot more as a collaborative thing where really my job is to try to get as much of what I want into the project and to look a certain way, 
but also to listen super carefully to what mm -hmm. they're saying. Like, like that job in particular, I was plunging into a different world and I had to think about, for example, something I'd never had to think about before, uh, kids or clients that were neuro, that they call neurodiverse, like people who didn't necessarily love, I love bright colors and bright patterning, I'm crazy for that, but that mm. is everybody. That can make some people really, really uncomfortable. So, mm. so I had to listen to that, to listen to the direction, essentially. Um, mm. So, so it's, this is a little broader than your question about the art director, but I love I this think, though. I love this. Go on. Um, I think it's this ability to really listen. Like the collaborative piece of this is that you're sort of putting yourself into the world of your client and you're trying to, to draw from them what it is that you think would be the best sort of gift or project uh, presentation um, result. Uh, that you personally can give them. That, that to me is a little bit of how it is. Well, what you're really answering is actually a question I should ask, which is what makes a great illustrator artist, you know, and it's listening to all the parts, but holding on to your, your high standards, your quality level, but how can you listen and not dumb down? And not, oh, well, they don't like bright colors, so I'm just going to make it really boring. And there's such a pain in the butt because bright colors are great. Everyone should love bright colors. Yeah. That's so annoying. Like, you can get yourself worked up. I know as an illustrator, I'd be like, Lila, calm down. You know, calm down. <laughs> like, they're not trying to make your art suck. I was much younger <laughs> then, too. But, you know, just like, how can I yeah. hear with my good listening and try to make a piece of art that really solves the problem. I think, I think the worst art direction is when they keep making changes and changes and changes. And one of the things I would say in the beginning is, please, make, so I'm going to give, tell me everything you want in the beginning on the phone. Then we're going to, I'm going to give you a rough, please be sure you have all the decision makers review the rough um, and any changes then. Then I will go to finish any changes after the finish will be billed. I right. said it nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I think if you recognize uh, that a project that you have is going off the rails in some way, <laughs> that it's um, experience is kind of your teacher, how you know that, like how you get, you know, signs of that. Um, but otherwise, there's a funny thing when you were talking is that the whole thing about color and all this is that in a funny way, you have to learn to not take this personally, you know, right. not take what their needs are for their job and how they communicate that to you. You're being hired by them. And, and that's why I strongly feel that you, you have your own work that you do and, mm -hmm. and you dictate what that is and you, you confine it or open it up and make it as expansive as you want. But when you are working with someone else, it is a way like you're kind of, you're working within these certain limitations if that's what you want to see them as and um yeah so it it's a challenge really look at it like a challenge and also the mm -hmm. fact that you know it's helping you because you know you're getting work so and they are they are actually paying you so we do <laughs> have to listen to them a little bit <laughs> Yeah, I think are writing the checks. I think you learn that dance, and I, I would say that it's very important. But you're right; it's like you don't want to be overrun by people, but you also want to really listen. Yeah, totally true. Um, okay, we have some Q and A's. Um, let's see. Um, Cynthia Cliff asks, "Do you ever get a project that you can't connect to?" And if so, how do you get inspired to be creative within that project? Oh, that's a and good course, question. I mean, I think it would depend names. on the scale of a project. If it's not, if it is something that you can do in a week or in, you know, a few days, then they're not connecting. I mean, that's part of your job. I, th I always felt like the job of learning to be an illustrator, which is not something I studied to be, but is learning how to draw anything, like literally anything. You, you look it up, you research it, and you can do a take on it. You can, you know, you can kind of make it your own. So, so actually turn that around maybe and say, if you can't connect, figure out a way to connect. How can you connect? How can you 
what is blocking you from connecting to that job? You know, oh, take that. it. So true, because you have to find a way to fall in love with each job if you want to be yeah. a really successful professional. That is your job. That's something you always said, actually. Did I always say that? That's your advice. Yeah, early on, I remember. Yeah. You find yeah. a way. I mean, God knows um, the weird jobs that we get and things you don't. I mean, I had to do... <laughs> I had to do brush lettering on always maxi pads for an advertising <laughs> photo shoot in Manhattan. Okay. I found a way, I'm serious. I, they had me write clean and dry. <laughs> on the actual maxi pad. On the pad. They had boxes of pads. <laughs> That's they, probably they, one they, of the. They bled, so, so to speak. Because I do lettering. I'm like, yeah. I don't really think you need my lettering for this. <clears throat> but, um, but yeah. I got Tina Turner's shoes for a video shoot once. That was like years before I was even, and, and, and I painted with the wrong kind of paint and, and she, you know, really dances and stuff and they, and they smeared and they bled, you know, they, they, um, they kind of smeared during the concert. So that was like, a, that was bad. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, let's see. Um, Anna Bianchi asks, do you work in Procreate too? If so, how do you make your style and textures feel the same in traditional media and digital? So I got an iPod about a year and a half ago, and then I started working because I started noticing, you know, that pro, that the iPad Pro and Procreate and the pencil were just really up to a, a kind of level of professionalism. And, and I love it. I love, I'll just sort of say that I love to work in a whole range of media. Like I like to work on painting large, like to look, keep expand. Look behind her, people. Yeah. <laughs> look at the, the paintings. And I really love to experiment with media. And that really includes digital media because you, you, you're kind of doing this thing um, for the, the Seattle job because I was creating an illustrator mural, a mural in Illustrator that is gonna be 35 feet long you know, um, I had to really think about that, but Illustrator is the great program to do that. And Procreate would not necessarily, I don't know how I'd do it in that because, you know, Illustrator, you can enlarge anything to like any size. And then you want to make sure everything is really perfect, you know, or, or like smooth in the way you want it to be. But, but I love working in these different medias and just playing with them and seeing, you know, what they can do. And I, I feel like you get to try on different versions of yourself in different media. Uh, I totally, I love that. That's so true. Yeah, one is not enough. Yeah, I agree. Um, someone, at, uh, Annette C. Webb asks, advice to someone making this career shift from art director to illustrator later in life. Sergio, how long have you been an illustrator? <laughs> because you were a graphic designer before. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I was. So I didn't study any of those things. I, I really studied art at UCLA. I was like a fine art major and then, you know, came out and it just seemed ridiculous. The idea of being an artist to me at that time, you know, and, and I couldn't even call myself that, you know, there was all that sort of stigma and, um, and I needed work. I needed to make a living. And so eventually I got sort of into design and graphic design and then eventually through designing, I just got into illustrating and then eventually made my way to you <laughs> and you know realized that illustrating is this whole area but i was seeing so much cool stuff uh, this was like kind of in the late mid 80s there's a lot of great stuff going on with uh design and illustration and mm -hmm. and my my goal now is to just break all of that down it's to break the walls of all of these terminologies that we use, these job descriptions that we use. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we're, we're these creative beings and we're trying to find either new outlets or different outlets or expand on our definitions of ourselves. So it's like, just drop the names. You learn a lot. I mean, the names, fine art, illustration, commercial, because everything is commercial. If someone pays you money for a painting in a gallery, that is commercial both of us have our gallery well i i'm not anymore but gallery artists and you know so fine artists and illustrators but also sarah joe you know back then when we got into illustration gallery work fine artwork was very male it was not a good time for women 
And, it, and whereas, it's still kind of, you know, it still I mean, kind of is. Whereas illustration, I think one of the reasons that drew me from fine art to illustration was um, there were a lot of women art directors that were very cool and assigning and uh, right. men, cool men, gay men who were more open to a feminine aesthetic. Uh, it wasn't as macho slowly in the 80s was becoming that way. And I think it, it was a safe place for me to go with my, my yeah, work. Yeah, it's a paycheck. You know, it's an immediate thing and people need it. And, um, and I think that there's this, I mean, part of what comes with that whole idea of breaking all of those things down, which I think is, is just something that we do. That's, I think, another job we have as, as creative people is to kind of question the structures and the hierarchies or the status quo of of what has come before us in addition to that we're standing on the shoulders like you're talking about all the people right. coming now are kind of being able to stand on the shoulders and do more sort of quote radical things right away because all these people have laid groundwork you know in the past for all of us um but i think it's this funny thing that i had to break this down too like if you're in multiple areas, then you don't have to accept the rules of any of them. And part of our job is to just say, to look at the, what the rules are and go, well, I don't like that. That doesn't apply to me or that doesn't work for me. How do I, you know, become more of who I am? How do I, how do I further this thing? I mean, another thing that you, Lila, have always talked about is that you're, we're always pushing the culture sort of forward in what our version of forward is. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, right. You know, <laughs> according to us, yeah. <laughs> other people may think it's sideways or yeah. upside down, but yeah, what we yeah, think. Hopefully they answered that question around, you know. I love that. Yeah, that was fantastic. Um, it, it, it is so interesting how uh, it, we do have that wonderful opportunity to change the visual culture in, in some ways. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's see if we have some questions here. Uh, how much, Christopher Lyles, oh, Christopher Lyles, hi. How much of your work is traditional dot, 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 sketch process? I think he means to sketch first. Um, I mean, it depends. It's, it's a combination. Um, and, and now with, you know, scanning and, and, and Photoshop, it, it, it's like, I, um, it's hard to sort of answer that and just, there's not one answer. Cause again, I think as with exploring different media, I like to, I like to explore uh, sort of coming up with a sketch. So if you're talking about a sketch as the thing that you need to show your client for approval, for example, it used to be like when I started out as an illustrator, it was like, well, you did that with pencil sketch, and then maybe you would, um, I don't know, somehow you had to get it so that you could send it. I, I mean, I've spent that, that time when, you know, we had the fax machines and we were doing all these different things before you were actually doing that all digitally. So I, I think because there's this whole digital world, um, it, it doesn't, it, it really what you're looking for is like, well, how will I make this in the end? And if for me, I think what I loved about uh, the iPad Pro, for example, I use it both with my painting work and with my commercial illustration work and whatever you can do to get to sort of infuse sort of freshness and, and you know, invigorate what you're doing, use it, you know, whether that's just to make a sketch, to create, to figure out new ideas. Um, one of the things I did for Seattle was to come up with his initial world, these sketches, I, I started with the largest pieces, the 35 foot mural and, and then another mural, which um, is like 22 feet or something, but is in a corner. And I started with that thinking, okay, if I can sort of get the world of what those things are. And I just started doing what I do in my, in my painting sort of practice, which is like cutting stuff up and taking from things I've done before, because they sort of like, okay, I'll harvest this from that. And, and build this sort of world. And, and I realized, wow, this is so much more how I work, something I learned through my painting, but, cause I don't work with like, just take a, a pencil. Like if you do work that way, great. That's a great way to work too. But, <laughs> but I, I like to sort of begin to already work in color because that feels very much like the world. And then I, then if I present it, I get to hear their response to it. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm not bringing in black and white and then the color all comes later, so. 
Um, anyways. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. I like how you use the word harvest, how you harvest from existing yes. stuff. Organ yeah. donor. <laughs> you know, when I was an illustrator, I was like, I had drawn so many freaking Chrysler buildings and Eiffel Towers <laughs> and Empire State Buildings. And this was before computers when I first started. And I'm like, man, I wish I could just like reuse. But everything was on, you know, my Reeves BFK paper and charcoal line and watercolor. I couldn't, you couldn't pick it up and move it. But I like, I would just like create like, a one, and then once computers started, I was like, man, I should just make a whole library of imagery and just like plop it in every time, you know, a car, a person, <laughs> whatever, the Empire State Building. Um, so anyway, that is cool harvesting. And, and as you say, I hope all of the viewers heard her say, whatever keeps your work fresh. Yeah, and freshness. You know, that's the way I look at it. Like, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you stand on your own head besides the yoga pose? You know, it's like, you want to do that. You want to kind of keep doing to that to your, you know, keep challenge yourself in that way. Well, and, and your, your viewers, you're listening to someone who's had a career for decades. And the reason she had, it's very hard to have career longevity in the creative arts for anyone. But the secret is, I'm going to reveal the secret. <laughs> you have to stay fresh and motivated and keep being excited and changing and growing. Not radical change, but incrementally. So yeah. like I said, incrementally. So if you do that, you're yeah. going to have a long career. I mean, look at us two older ladies <laughs> hanging, hanging out, hanging in and keeping changing. So I want to impart that to you. Okay. Um, Let's see if we have another question. Don't forget, type your questions in Q&A. Where's my cursor? Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Could you, Al Alicia Welch says, could you talk about the paintings behind you? What inspired your techniques did you use? I love the colors. Um, so, so I don't know what you can see. Here, if I slide over, you can see this other wall. Oh, great. It's got a lot of stuff on it. and. Um, this is one of the things that I've been learning and teaching myself um, that what, it's sort of like this idea, what, what is a painting? Really, what is it? Like how, how in a sense can I deconstruct it? Maybe what my paintings are, I went from thinking, you know, a single thing to, well, maybe it's this entire wall installation to maybe I can actually hang them in something. Uh, I'm in this thing right now where uh, this gallery in LA invited a hundred artists, uh, all around LA County to put work up somewhere because we're all quarantining. So I hung this painting in front of my house, you know, because it's painted muslin. So it's sort of like a big flag. It's like, you know, my freak flag. <laughs> and um, so great. So, That's hanging know, outside your house. Yes, it's on. It's hanging. You know, we, my son helped me, you know, figure out this thing. We put it up. Um, and we take it down and put it back up every, every morning and, and, and day. But it's also this idea of, of like taking things out of whatever the gallery, what does that even mean, that context? And just, just to keep moving these things around. So, so, so the work, the question was a little bit like, I'm, I'm experimenting with different kinds of media now. Now I'm stuffing and sewing and painting and mm -hmm. I'll work with, so I love working with paper because that probably comes out of a lot of working with paper during my years of, you know, being an illustrator and such. Um, but also I've been working with muslin a lot and, mm. and it's thinner than canvas and I can cut it, uh, but yet I can sew it and stitch it too. It, and so I can stuff it. I can, so I'm sort of love to just keep moving and pushing, you know, these things um, further outward. It's also the secret of, of healthy longevity, I think, too. It's like how you well, stay passionate. Boring. And playing. It's a form playing. of play. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be serious, really. I, I don't, it, it, yeah. you know, that's just a, that's a construct, really. It yeah. doesn't have to be serious. Um, so now I'd like if you could hold <laughs> up a few of the things you brought oh, over to okay. show us. Sure. Um, everybody's dying to see our oh, art. And then we're going to look at a, a whole bunch of images okay. of Sarah does too. Well, I brought these out. Um, these are 
this was such a fun job. Um, this was for Land of Nod. Um, Lilla was saying, turn them around, and I still have the tag on them. And there were four of them, and I only, I probably gave the two, the other two I had, so but it was fantastic. as a tag. Oh, that so. was the coolest job was, like, ever. Amazing. Project. Land of Nod was just assigning such cool, cool, cool stuff. They've since been um, bought, they were bought by uh, Crate and Barrel, and now they are Crate and Barrel kids. But when yeah. they were, what was his name, that wonderful, the, the, the creator of it, Lee or something? Yeah, it was, was I think at one time. I mean, I just want to also say a little bit about my, my grandparents, my mom's parents, um, were hung Jewish Hungarian emigres who, who came, you know, sort of fled Europe, came to America, and they owned an embroidery business, you know, and I grew up with these grandparents who had the, a little embroidery business, like that was what they did, and they worked for, you know, uh, eventually they moved to LA and, and had an office in the Brad, or a shop in the Bradbury building, you know, when it was all little shops of people, and, um, and so embroidery and, like, the folk art nature and that I got to do this and that uh, was a thrill, really. It's so, like a oh, circle in a way. I know, I know. Um, so this is a book I did for a Chronicle and it's a kind of fully illustrated middle school, um, middle grade fiction um, book and it's all about a young girl who's lost her mom and is, um, uh, it's it's told in the first person and she's an artist but she's trying to you know make her way in the world and um, it was such a near and dear to my heart this book which started mm -hmm. off I think I was only going to be doing like black and white sketches and then then this is the Korean version like they published it there and I, I love that. Um, There's so oh, that's great you're freezing a little bit can you oh. hold up the cover of Noonie again? Yes, sorry. That's okay. By the way, I was so excited when we got you that gig. So, so excited. I remember, and I was just, look at that. You, and for them, the, um, what? for them to, um, to commission you to do it was such a brave and cool uh, choice. I was really, really happy that you got it. That was yeah. huge. You had to like a billion images for that. So and, um, that's it for show and tell, right? Now we'll look at your I can show more, but you, so it's fine. Okay. You have other stuff, so I don't need Let to show me, more. Let's take a look at this. We are gonna look at this gorgeous PDF. Sarah Jo, just say next when you're ready to the, for the next one. Yeah, this is just the intro, so next. Okay. Cool. Are you frozen? Oh, there we go. So I oh. think this is a, and this was, um, this was for the LA Metropolitan Transit Authority. And it was like a neighborhood poster competition. And I ended up doing a neighborhood that's served by, you know, the buses or any of the MTA. And, and then they did on the lower left hand side is the in union boxes and they, some of the post sort of sequentially yeah. they that top piece is still one of my favorite pieces. You are bringing And I lived in it for years, so I, I it, you know, I felt like this was a my homage. I wasn't living there when I did it, but I did live there for a while. So, okay. Next, Next? okay. Next. Oh, sorry. Okay, oh my God. Godiva chocolates. So, so my frozen yeah. for some reason or I'm not getting to the Godiva yet. Um, oh. hmm. um, you're freezing a little bit. Um, so I can just tell everybody, this okay. was done for Godiva. Uh, oh, maybe it's me. Oh, there. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you and I see the Godiva screen. Okay, good. You wanna tell us about this? Oh, oh, they don't uh, see Godiva yet. Oh, hmm. I, I just got it. <laughs> it just flipped okay. to Godiva. Oh, Kim says, yes, yeah. we got it now. Okay. Uh, well, this was like 
So I want to tell people that like, I don't just get like, these are sort of the highlights of some of the work I've gotten, obviously. Um, and these jobs don't come along all the time. And this was an amazing job to get. And then in the end, I got to go to Japan where the headquarters is um, when they were first launching this. And that was, you know, that was a, an amazing experience. But I just, I love working on this. This was, you know, get, I think that the theme of it was, you know, the sort of folk art mixture. They, that's what they wanted. Um, and I, I just love that. And I love going into great detail and patterning and color. And, uh, and there was, there were actually two entire campaigns. There was a whole Valentine's Day campaign, campaign and then something called White Day, which is celebrated mostly in Japan, but also some other uh, countries. Um, and uh, it's, it's a sort of switch on, on Valentine's Day, or it's sort of done differently. Mm, it's so beautiful. I love this so much. And again, such a cool, cool commission that they used you for this. Um, I do want to say too, to our viewers, Sarah Jo gets some of the biggest, coolest <laughs> packaging and ad jobs. Like you don't get a lot of little jobs. We always remark about that. Like yeah. Sarah Jo gets like the freaking huge Godiva campaign, the freaking huge hospital thing. You did Old Navy too, right? A big thing for Old Navy, right? And all brand, like just really, really big advertising things. And 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 I think the reason is is because her work is so unique and distinctive that it's really, really. I used to say this about my career too. It was my art was was different and. I would say I'm really, really wrong for 99% of the jobs out there, but I'm super yeah. right for that 1% and 1%, even like 0.0001% is more than enough for a career. And Sarah Jo yeah. is the same. Yeah, that's, a, that's a really good point. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good point. Next one? Next, sure, next. Okay, so let me know when yeah. you, when you oh, see the yeah. sterling color of love. Do you see it? Yeah, well, I can talk about it because uh, um, Sterling Color of Love is, um, there it is, I'm seeing it. Um, so this was a tie-in with the Godiva because uh, Barnes and Noble, Sterling does a lot of books maybe for them, or in this case, um, they had a tie-in. And, and when the Godiva, they sell a lot of Godiva packaging or uh, chocolates on Valentine's Day. And so they wanted to have this, this coloring book. So, so that was, it was a separate thing. And I didn't use the imagery. I couldn't use the imagery from Godiva, but um, that's, that's what this was. Or is. So great, so great. Nick. Here we have Gallison, KDD Young Readers, Justin Roberts, AIGA. And I just want to point out to how she has a lot of people. I always encourage artists draw people even if it's in your own way because you're going to get more work that way you're going to get more work as you can see do you see this um, one yet but now i see it okay good um okay. yeah um i mean it's i guess i i kind of these are sort of from the from work i have done before but they they still feel good to me <laughs> it's work i'm still proud of you know i am, and, uh, i still love these totally you know, it, it's it's work i might go back and look at you know and go okay um and um uh i don't know i don't have really much to say uh about except that the one the meltdown that was all painted with gouache so and the other uh -huh. three actually are all done with illustrators so I think what I figured out about Illustrator is just how to kind of treat it more like a drawing program that was like as free as I could make it. Like I don't do any of the, like much of the hard edge stuff with it. I, I just use it probably in a very limited sort of way, but it's how I, it's how I like to do so it. Great. So. so great. Okay, next one. Yeah. So while this is loading, the Gallison I'm looking Creek I'm opening it on my desktop so I can follow along with you. So if, okay. if I well, can. Okay. No, well, tell me when it comes up on the screen so that way the <laughs> yeah. art, the viewers yeah. will know. So um, the uh, the top two, the top right, those two pieces, they were done.
for a limited edition silkscreen um, pillowcase for this company called Third Door Down originally. And then, uh, you know, I did them in black ink and scanned them. And at that point, you could, you know, I was starting to use Photoshop. And this was also a little while ago. But um, I don't know, the, these these pieces that you do, they sometimes, they, I, I ended up kind of referring to some of this for that Seattle job, which is just mm. sort of for me. It's, it's this way of kind of going in and back and forth between the, the, the different work that you do, and, and then you bring in your present self with it. It's, mm. it's kind of interesting. I just want to point out on the piece on the upper left, things to do, that maze with the people in it, is just the coolest thing ever. I love it so much. I love it so See, much. Maybe I should take that and, and enlarge that and, and do something. Uh -huh. But um, yeah. yeah, I think with Illustrator, I just got really into the intricacy, the way that you could just get very intricate with it. And then you, mm -hmm. could, you could make mistakes and, and change them. Yeah, for sure. Next one, should I go to next? Next. next. Okay, Live Happy Magazine. Again, you see her people, and her people, she's always done diverse people, always. It's not a new thing for her. She's always done diverse people, diverse hair, diverse skin color, diverse features. And the people are so animated with so much movement. We should talk about you writing a children's book and illustrating it, Sarah Jo. We should Let's, talk do about that. That. Let's, Let's do, do that. it. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. Okay, um, I'm going to go to the next Next one, Good. so I want to get through. Ceridian, diversity. Oh, look at that, diversity kits. So tell me when this one comes up on your screen. Okay, diversity. I see. You see um, it? This was just kind of what it says it is. It was a, uh, yeah, it was a diversity kit and CD and, you know, booklet and for, di for a younger age and then for more of a, a teenager. There were sort of two sets. Yeah, and then mm. like I remember including the person in the, you know, uh, it's also the idea of like stretching out the idea of what diversity is because, because we keep expanding and, and, and recognizing more different kinds of people within that. I think that's really important that like as, you know, any artist, like we're able to, to amplify that, you know, in our work. It's such a good thing and we're so able to enlighten the consciousness. Okay, next one. Next. All around the world. This yeah, was this was, um, this was, these were, it was a whole sort of CD packaging uh, theme of music for kids that were from all these different um, parts of the world. Mm. This is America and Africa. Um, and then Latin America, I think, or the other one was somewhere else. Um, Great. Next. Next. Okay. Chronicle books. Oh, this is good. They can see Nuni um, because we couldn't really see the interiors so well. So these are interiors from the book she fully illustrated, middle grade. And in the center right, Nuni's masterpiece. That kind of looks like the cover. But that's not. Uh, yeah. Center right is the cover. Yeah. And then that quote, the brilliant, a brilliant artist must try not to be afraid. And I love to get to mix lettering. I, I just feel like letters are such a, a great, I mean, they're, they're just wonderful. They're, they're just, <laughs> they're this opportunity. I, love, I just love to, to letter in various ways. Yeah. So beautiful. Next. Next. Land of Nod, now Creighton Kids, all this fabulous bedding. So great. And the pillow and the sheets. Wow. This was one of those, like, how in the world did I get, like, did they let me do this? I <laughs> this know. was this key character, this dance, they called it the dancer bedding, and it was all this, you know, and it was like, really? They're really, really doing this? It's, well, know. and that was at a time when things, I mean, Land of Nod, excuse me, Land of Nod was the coolest, coolest, or one of the most cool um, children's and baby 
product makers at the time. And when they came on the market, I'm like, I want to get in with them. I want my artists yeah. to work with them like right. crazy. And they were cool, but it was still a little on the delicate side. I mean, I, I, not to despair, I loved every single thing that they did. But for them to even go this much further and have these, the Sarah Jo look, radical, very cool. I love them for it forever. Too bad they're not, they're still not creating a uh, land of nod. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, this, is is, this is the map. Let me know when the map shows up. Oh, with the, oh, the bedding. The boys bedding. The yeah. boys bedding. Right, of course, because, you know, boys, it has to have dark yeah, colors. Yeah, I know. They you know, boys. <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. We weren't so far along that we were, you know, going, right. well, we should tenderize sheets. <laughs> you know, let, yeah. let sheets be not gender uh, oriented. But anyway. Well, it, the consumer, the consumer would not buy pink for boys. The consumer want it you know didn't want like dark colors for little girls but that's over with thank goodness in some places <laughs> yeah right um okay you can go next i love this by the way um thank you. clean plate club oh yeah that was uh no no kid hungry i think was the name of the that was a, a Thing for Land of Nod. Um, no Hungry Kid, I think is, no, yeah. Right, right. For cookbooks for families. Yeah. Kid, um, kids recipes. And then I, and I did these different illustrations. Yeah, and I actually painted those wooden spoons and then scanned them and put these various um, really? like paper. It was really fun. Oh, wow. Do you still have those? I think I've given most of them away, but you know, uh, I should definitely do some more because that, that would was be really great. And then send us some fit pictures. Okay. Send you pictures. Branching out for the library library foundation of LA. Yeah, Los that was a recent. I'm not seeing it on my screen yet, but um, but that was a recent job, and that was done. Uh, like in transit, going to my nephew's wedding in Boston, <laughs> like on the iPad Pro. Yeah, that's how iPad Pro. And then, um, yeah, I think completely done that way. Um, but many layers, like I kind of got that uh, using Procreate. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, so great. And it's a poster for, uh, for a big summer festival. Back in the days when we used to all gather. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I love the 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 child or adult in the bottom with the guitar. It's just a really compelling portrait. Okay. Uh, Next one, various commissions and personal work. And you know, I've always loved that blue piece of yours, like from way back. And the one below it on the left. Well, all of these, actually all of these um are so all of many these of my favorite kind of paintings and um yeah and you know this used to to me like I don't know it's just interesting the way in some ways something that you do feels maybe too edgy at one moment but then it's perfectly kind of almost like right. accepted like sometimes it takes time for things to um be part of the site guys I agree and you know what I want to tell our viewers is I know for me, and this was true for you too, Sarah Jo, we had looks that were ahead. So it took longer to get work initially, but then once people catch up or get used to it, or art directors find something they can commission us for, um, then we, we become more of the norm, but in a good way. But also, Sarah Jo, what you did is you made your look become under over you, you stop up you you continue to do beautiful work in your own eccentric way and and clients then um came to you for it and it became more normalized in a sense so if your style feels ahead or different or edgy 
hang in there. That's my advice. Hang in there. Of course, you you know, what yeah. does Sarah Jo have going for her? She has great people. She has gorgeous colors. She has a freedom and a looseness. We're going to move to the next one. But I'd also say to people, like, it's a really, you know, you're aware of, we all become aware, like, through Instagram and all these things of, like, who's super popular and whose work is. And, you know, it, it's like you kind of have to, you have to fight for yourself. You know, you have to fight for yourself for yourself, not for yourself because of, you know, you want to, you know, put yourself on the whole world. No, it's like you have to hang in there for, for your voice and that you do through your, that's what I think. So, um, and, and if you're always beginning, you work, so you find other ways, but you always keep that going as much as you yeah. can. Tell us um, about this very yeah, cool this oncology job, series. What a great job. I mean, uh, another one of the artists from Lilith's group, um, Linda Kettlehut, um, mm -hmm. who is probably no longer with us, but I never got to meet her, but she did the first series. This, this, was a, this is like an oncology nursing forum. It's, it's just for oncology nursing um, nurses. And uh, it's a magazine. Uh, and they had been doing, I guess, photography before Linda stepped in and did the, the year's worth of covers. And she did a beautiful job. And I followed her the following year, or whatever that was. And I love the way they wanted you to kind of take the subject matter, but not be specific. You know, initially mm -hmm. I was like, hey, I will study, you know, cancer cells and all this stuff. But no, they they wanted this marriage between sort of abstract yet sort of biological looking and um, but sort of optimistic in a way or positive. Um, and I absolutely loved working on these covers. And it was a wonderful uh, person to work with. Um, she kept saying, don't, don't make it specific. Um, it doesn't have to be about cancer cells. Uh, she just kept sort of pushing me into this sort of more abstract area. And I will, I will say one thing about this right now is something I feel really strongly about because I actually have a really strong interest in, in science and in sort of the scientific world and the biology world and, and the natural world. And I feel like right now as artists, that is a place that we need to communicate, find ways to communicate, like what's going on, like for, for the general public. Um, make that understandable, mm -hmm. relatable. Um, and I feel, like, I feel like that's a kind of mission. <laughs> science. So. Listening to the scientists. Yes. Okay, let us go to the next one. Spring Shopping Shoe Guide. Spring Shoe Guide for Runner's World. Again, awesome people. And I always love Fabulous. Did yeah. embroider. Like this had a lot of uh, collage elements that I scanned. The whole thing was sort of painted, put together, scanned, you know, composed digitally in Photoshop. And, you know, it was really like, they let me do this? <laughs> it was know, another one. Unbelievable. Of <laughs> so I, there's some shoe in there there's a running shoe in there somewhere next you can go next okay um we have oh i love this assorted hand lettering commissions and i'll wait till it pops up for people there's that all there's that job that you mentioned that wild job to, to illustrate this whole Again, kind like, of for them. <laughs> and of course, advertising and packaging pays so well. Um, yes. And, Thankful. you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I went to my supermarket when this came out and I flipped the boxes around so I could see all the backs because that's what I was going to do. Yeah. Uh, one on our right middle is the back side. And then I would like photograph them all in the line <laughs> at the market. You know, we have to give a shout out to all these cool art directors and designers and design directors that that say, yeah, got to get Sarah Jo Frieden for this. You know, it's fabulous. Okay, yeah, let's go to the, yeah, it's, they're, they're, I agree. 
Yeah. Um, so now when this pops up for everybody, this is Land of Nod for Crate and Kid, now Crate Kids. Here you see in great detail, what a great photo of the dolls from her drawings. Unbelievable. So that is probably got to be one of the coolest jobs you ever did. <laughs> well, also the fact that that hair, the one, the second from the left, like they actually did that whole, know. you know, stuffed thing. Like really, it was so great. So was, fantastic. Like puffy doll cutout. Unbelievable. And then I got to name them. Each of them had a name. I think the name, yeah, the names oh, are yeah. right. Yeah, Evelina, Frankie, Lolly, and Ines. So great. <laughs> okay, next one. So it's this another. Is more dolls. Yeah, more dolls. So great. Um, yeah, this one was one of those ones that went to sample but didn't go to production. So you yeah. know that happened. That that actually happened a few times, but. But in this case, I, I, I just took them and, and tried to convey from the little pictures that they gave me of the production samples, like from drawing to sample. Yeah. This would have been the most wild dolls ever <laughs> produced by a major manufacturer, for sure. <laughs> totally great. So, and, and, and isn't that what we, we just always want? Like, what more can we do to push you know sort of that push thing okay new personal work new personal work I'll procreate uh pieces uh oh mm. except sorry on the upper right hand side that is um that's gouache or painted uh, but uh yeah so I, I feel like procreate is just this really i love it it's really it's it's beautiful drawing combination of so many things and then you can take things into photoshop and you know you can just do this ongoing back and forth because actually what i did do now that i'm looking at these is i did i like to scan in paintings that i'm working on at early mm -hmm. stages and then they become like backgrounds for some of the digital pieces and so it's this endless kind of iterations that you can do it so, is beautiful. Yeah. I, I really like the lettering on that gouache one. Oh, thank you. Next. Next. Okay, whoops. Ooh, patterns. I love these. I don't, these must have been from before, way back. I don't remember. <laughs> They're they just you know, what I did, but they haven't really been ever picked up by anybody. But I guess I find that um, you find ways to use these things. You know, there was that time when we were doing uh, lots of blurb books and, and lots of patterning. And I think that doing this really got me back into painting, actually, because you know I kept what? doing it. Yeah. Send these to us again. I'd love to pitch okay. them for fabric because now I feel like the time is right. Okay. Okay. I really I'll do. do. It's gorgeous. <coughs> Thank you. And you can do next. Uh, I think we're almost done. Here are more patterns. Jumbly yeah, mosaic. These are jumbly <coughs> mosaic. Yeah, it's fun to name these. Um, yeah, this is super like intricate done with Illustrator. I, I just, you know, I, I love That's getting crazy. into this. Oh, no, I got, I got a cough drop, thanks. <laughs> pollen, I have my window open. I'm oh, dear. Pollen. Oh. Okay, I'm good, I have my cough drop. Oh, good. The atrium. Yeah, I just put this, I think it's the last one, I put it in there because, um, oh, I have a picture uh, when it pops up, there it is. So on the lower left is that painting I was talking about, just hanging it, and I mean, I'm just so crazy about plants. And um, I, I just, the whole idea of like taking my paintings and just putting them into a garden setting is like, I just love it. But I, I put these in there because the lower left, uh, lower right, sorry, is the actual piece that I 
hung in the, in the atrium. It's a, it's a space in uh, the Helms Design Center. And the top painting, I mean, sorry, the top photograph, I just took some of the smaller work I had and kind of did like a, like a virtual sketch of like what I'd like to do in the space as a way to present this idea to the uh, people, to the person who I was uh, working with there. And, um, and when I did that, you know, those are like not, like some of those are not large, but when I kind of put that together, it was kind of like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. You know, these They're really amazing. Hang. But, um, and this is recent. Yeah, this is I think recent. I just saw them on Instagram. Uh, Julia Parker yeah. just wrote, I feel like we could all learn so much from Sarah Jo about creativity and life attitude. Love her. Oh, I know she's great. Thank you, Julia. It's so sweet. You oh, are an inspiration. I'm going to stop the screen oh, sharing. Lauren, she said uh, they're in her building at the... Yeah, they, I did have a, I had a show of work there at, um, at the atrium in that space. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much, Lola. I mean, I'm not sure if we are, we're like almost done. I think we're in really good shape and everybody is Sarah Jo not amazing and so <laughs> inspiring. Thank you, Sarah Jo, so much. This was wonderful. Yeah. I want to thank remind you. everybody. Make sure you're, you're on our newsletter. That's how you heard of this. If you missed any, go to our homepage. On the homepage, Kim puts in the link of any recorded. All these are recorded. So if you missed the beginning or anything, it's all there for you. And next week we have Kendra Binney. Yay. Thank you everybody for participating and joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Sarah Jo. It's my pleasure to be your agent. It was really fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Okay. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.